look at the rules for revenues and expenses. So we've got to look at the rule for owner's equity first before we can understand how this is going to work because uh, owner's equity go up on the credit side but decrease on the debit. Now we learned earlier that revenues make owner's equity go up so it actually makes sense that it would have the same rule. Conversely, uh, expenses make owner's equity go down so that makes sense that it will be a debit on uh, to increase an expense in direct comparison with an owner's equity or revenue account. Well, here's all the rules together as we know them so far. So we've got assets and expenses going up on the debit side and then liabilities, owner's equity and revenues on the credit side. Let's process a transaction. Sold goods for $1,000 cash plus GST of $100. Cost price $600. We're going to treat this as two mini transactions where we will deal with the sale price first and then the cost price. So starting with the sale amount, we've got cash which is an asset increasing and assets increase on the debit side so that'll go up $1,100. Looking at the GST part, GST is a liability. Is it going to be going up or down? Well we're the one that's charging it or collecting it so that increases our liability. Liabilities must go up on, on the credit side and then lastly we've got the sale amount which is a revenue and revenue increasing and revenues must increase on the credit side. So there we've got a debit of 1100, two matching credits of 1000 and 100, so all debits equal credits. Next uh, part we've got to deal with is the cost of sale, which is an expense, an expense increasing, and that takes place on the debit side. And lastly, we've got stock, which is an asset, and that's going to decrease. Assets must decrease on the credit side. So even though we've split it up over two separate amounts, all our debits still equal all our credits. There's just five particular entries for this transaction. Looking at posting it, let's start with the sale amount. We're going to post a debit to cash and a credit to GST and sales. We'll need a double reference in the cash ledger because it's uh, going to be spread over two other ledgers on the credit side in sales and GST. In the other two, we'll just have a straightforward ledger, oh sorry, reference to cash a bank. Uh, looking at the cost of sale entry, we're going to do a debit to cost of sales and a credit to stock. Simple referencing to each of the ledgers. Let's have an expense now. Advertising of $300 plus uh, GST of 30 was purchased on credit terms of 60 days. So the first item we have is advertising, which is an expense, and it's increasing. Expenses increased on the debit side. Next thing we've got is GST liability. The liability, uh, when we're the one that's um, paying GST, or in this case being charged it, that decreases our GST liability and therefore must be a debit. Lastly, we've got creditors. We've put this on account, so no cash with this transaction. Creditors are a liability and they're increasing and liabilities must increase on the credit side and our debits equal our credits. Posting that entry, we've got debit advertising, credit to, uh, sorry, debit to GST, and credit to creditors. Getting our referencing right, the debits will reference creditors, and the credit entry will reference two ledgers, advertising and GST liability.